Hello and welcome to part 32 of my Japanese for Beginners series. In this lesson, we're going to cover nanika, nanimo, dokoka ni, and doko ni mo to express something, nothing, somewhere, and nowhere. This lesson corresponds with pages 196 and 235 of the Genki Volume 1 Japanese textbook, but don't worry, even if you don't have the textbook, you can still follow along. Several lessons ago, we learned that nani means what? Well, I have news for you. If you add ka to the end of nani, turn it into nani ka, then that means something or anything. But guess what? Plot twist. If you add mo to the end of nani instead of ka and make it nani mo, then that means nothing. Here is a simple chart to illustrate what I'm talking about. So for positive statements, if you have nani ka, that means something. If it's a question that has nanika, it can also mean something. The Genki textbook says it means anything, but it can also mean something, but something or anything along those lines. And then if it's a negative statement, nanimo plus a negative verb or, or something like that, then it is not anything or nothing. And to make this make a little more sense, here are some sentences using these rules in action. Watashi ga nani ka mite imasu. That means I am looking at something. If it were watashi ga nani o mite imasu ka, it would be like what am I looking at? Um, but it is nani ka, which means something. I'm looking at something. So it is a, an affirmative statement, it is a positive statement, and it has nani ka, so it is something. I'm looking at something. Otou-san wa nani ka motte kimashita ka? So there's a ka at the end of this, so we already know that it is a question, which means anything or something. So otou-san, as for dad, uh, nani ka, something or anything, motte kimashita ka? So the verb motte kimashita is past tense of motte kimasu. Um, this is an interesting little dichotomy, so I'll just share with you what it is. Uh, we haven't really covered this rule yet, but adding kuru to the end of a te form of a verb versus iku to the te form of a verb. If you add iku to the end of the verb, it means that the action is going away from you. But if you add kuru, it means that the action is like coming towards the speaker. So motte iku would mean motte is like to hold something. Motte iku means to take something. So like you're taking it somewhere, like away from the speaker because iku. But if it's motte kuru, it means to bring something. Even though it's the same motte verb, if you're iku with it, it means that you're taking something somewhere. But if it's uh, kuru, it means you're bringing something somewhere. So there's a fun little distinction there. That's a more advanced grammar rule, but just to break down what the verb motte kuru or motte kimas means. So motte kimashita is brought. So it is a question and it's nanika. So did dad bring anything with him? Here's the third sentence. Kyo wa nani mo tabete nai. So we're using mo with nani and it is a negative statement. Tabete nai. So that means it is nothing or not anything. So kyo wa nani mo tabete nai. Today I haven't eaten anything. So you may notice that uh, the verb tense when you're using this nani mo thing to express you haven't done something or you haven't verbed, you haven't eaten something, you haven't seen something or whatever, it is in the te form plus negative. It is not in the past tense. It is sort of like the, the present participle tense. Tabete inai. Tabete nai. So here are some more sentences to illustrate this in action. Inu ga nani ka nonderu yo. So inu is a dog. The dog is our subject, inu ga. Nani ka nonderu. So that means is drinking something. And then the yo is again back several lessons. That's just um, saying, I assure you that <laughs> um, you're being firm in your statement that the dog is drinking something. Here's another one. Here's another one. Nani ka nomimasu ka? So this is a question. So anything, we're in anything territory here. Nani ka nomimasu ka? Would you like to, or are you gonna, <laughs> would you like anything to drink? Or uh, going back a few lessons, nani ka nomimasen ka? would be kind of the more like natural and polite way to ask someone, oh, would you, wouldn't you like to drink something? Deパートに行ったけど、何も買わなかった。So, kedo, I 
pretty sure we've covered this in videos. I'm pretty sure it's come up before, but kedo means like but or however. So this sentence is in two parts, something, something, but something, something. So debato ni itta, that means I went to the department store. Kedo, however, but nani mo kawana katta. So we're using the nani mo with a negative. So that means that it is nothing or not anything. Uh, kawana katta is did not, did not buy. So to not buy past tense. So the whole sentence is, I went to the department store, but I bought nothing or, but I didn't buy anything. So now using the same principles uh, with nani, uh, you can also take some other unknowns and we're going to look at doko and dare. So doko is, koko would be here, soko is where you are, asoko is over there, but doko is we don't know where. It's a location that we don't know. And then dare is who or whom. It's a person we don't know who we're talking about here. So these are more unknown words, just like nani is what. It's like some unknown noun, some unknown location, and some unknown person. And it works in similar ways with ka and mo that nani does. So here is a handy dandy little chart to illustrate um, how all of these words work. So for something, it's nani ka and then a blank. Someone, dare ka and a blank. And then somewhere, doko ka and a blank. And then if you want to express the negatives, so nothing, nani, blank, mo, no one, dare, blank, mo, and nowhere, doko, blank, mo. So you might wonder what these blanks are between the, the question word and the mo or the ka. And a lot of times a particle will come there. And you'll see when I show you a few sentences how that exactly works. But this is like your chart that you want to kind of memorize um, in how you say something, someone, somewhere versus nothing, no one, nowhere. And here are some sentences uh, to illustrate all these in action. Dare ka to odorimashita ka? So this is dare ka. So someone or anyone. Uh, since it is a question, it's more along the territory of anyone. To uh, odorima. So you might remember particle to in this case, if it's a noun, to verb, it means you're doing the verb with the noun. So the the noun in this case is someone or anyone, dareka, and the verb is odorimashita, which is the past tense of dance, so danced. So did you dance with anyone? And then if you answer that question, iye dare to mo odorimasen deshita. So we're using mo and a negative, so that means no one or not anyone. So dare to mo, notice how the particle to, uh, to illustrate with, is coming between the dare and the mo. So if you remember the chart earlier, it was always the nani or the dare or the doko, and then there was like an underscore, a space, a blank space, and then the ka or the mo, and that's why, because oftentimes you'll have some other particle that goes into that blank space. You wouldn't say dare mo to odorimasen deshita. That's bad grammar. You say dare to mo odorimasen deshita. And you'll see how this works with other particles in another example. So no, I didn't dance with anyone. Uh, dare ka ni choko ageta? This is more casual speech. <laughs> so ageta is the past tense of ageru, which is to give someone something. So dare ka ni to someone uh, choko ageta? So did you give anyone chocolate or did you give chocolate to anyone? And then you could answer it, dare ni mo agete nai. So notice again, this is one of these mo followed by a negative verb. And there is a particle ni coming between the dare and the mo. So before it was the particle to coming between dare and mo, and this time it's particle ni coming between dare and mo because you're giving the present to someone. So particle ni, you're not like giving the present with someone for particle to, you're giving it to someone. So particle ni. So dare ni mo agete nai. Notice I'm doing again that present participle negative tense, the agete inai versus agenai. Um, Dare ni mo agenai is like, I will not give it to anyone, but dare ni mo agetenai means I have not, I haven't, I didn't uh, give anyone chocolate. Doko ka ni ikimashou. <laughs> so, doko ka, so it's doko, where, with a ka, so now it is somewhere, ni, to, ikimashou, let's go. So it means let's go somewhere. 
私の運命の人は必ずどこかにいますよ。So it's a very romantic poetic sentence. So 私の運命の人。So 運命の人 is the one. Basically, it literally means the fated person. But it's basically the one, the one that you're fated to be with, like your your soulmate, basically. Um, so, watashi no soulmate, my soulmate, wa, as for my soulmate, kanarazu means like, surely,、um, doko ka ni imasu yo. So, doko ka ni imasu yo is like the grammatical part that we're looking at with this lesson. All of that other stuff was a preamble. So, doko ka ni imasu,、uh, imasu to be for people or living things. So, doko, ta, doko ka ni imasu is, is somewhere yo. Um, I assure you that God is my witness. <laughs> so,、um, as for my soulmate,、um, I'm sure that they're out there somewhere. So, surely the one for me is out there somewhere.、Uh, and then here's like the sad opposite <laughs> sentiment of that that's also kind of poetic and romantic. I translate a lot of romantic、uh, visual novels, so that's why a lot of this stuff kind of comes out of me. Anyway, Kimi wa doko ni mo inai. So, notice again, doko. Ni mo inai, not doko mo ni inai, it's doko ni mo inai.、Um, kimi wa, as for you, soft you, you are nowhere, you are not anywhere. Doko ni mo inai. You are nowhere to be found, you are gone.、Uh, and for the last example, this, this has a, a little bit of、um, grammar we haven't covered yet, but I wanted to include it anyway, because this is the first example that popped into my head when I saw, okay, I'm going to do a lesson on like everywhere and nowhere. There is a Hamasaki Ayumi song called, I think, Everywhere Nowhere, <laughs> like literally in English. And、um, one of the lines, like the last line of the chorus, is Doko e datte ike sugite, doko e mo ike zumi ita. It's hard for me to say that without the cadence of the song. Doko e datte ike sugite. Please don't demonetize me, YouTube.、Um, so, doko e datte, so the datte we haven't really covered in these lessons yet, but don't worry. Doko e datte ike sugite. So, ikeru is like to be able to go. And then you might remember from a few lessons back, sugiru is too much. So, to be able to go somewhere too much. It's weird English, like we wouldn't really say it that way, but it works in Japanese, so that's kind of cool. So, doko e datte means like towards anywhere、um, we could go too much,、um, to a fault, sort of. Doko e mo. <laughs> Ikezuni ita. So, Ikezuni means like unable to. It's kind of like nai, this zuni ending. So, just think of that as nai. And then ita、uh, was, were.、Um, so, notice it's doko e, mo. We're using particle e, separating the doko and the mo. And the zuni、uh, at the Ikezuni is a negative. So, that means we could go anywhere to a fault. <laughs> so, we were unable to go anywhere. And in like more interpretive English, that actually makes sense. It's more like given the freedom to go anywhere, we wound up going nowhere. And now, on to the review section of this video. I have timestamps in the video description below and in a pinned comment at the top of the comment section. If you go in the video description, you will also notice I have a lot of links to other、uh, Japanese language learning channels. That's because I don't want you to learn your Japanese just from me. I am one source and I'm not a native Japanese speaker, especially for these sections where I'm like demonstrating how to say sentences and such. My accent is not perfect.、Uh, so, consult native people <laughs> for、uh, good accents and for like more natural. Sounding and perfect, like Japanese grammar. This is meant to be an introductory lesson, so do not stop with me. Go out and learn from other people as well. Watashi ga nani ka mite imas. Otou san wa nani ka motte kimashita ka? Kyo wa nani mo tabete nai. Inu ga nani ka nonderu yo? Nani ka nomimasu ka? デパートに行ったけど何も買わなかった。誰かと踊りましたかいいえ、誰とも踊りませんでした。誰かにチョコあげた誰にもあげてない。どこかに行きましょう。私の運命の人は必ずどこかにいますよ。君はどこにもいない。どこへだって行けすぎてどこへも行けずにいた。
Thanks for watching. In the next lesson, we are going to learn how to modify a noun with a verb instead of just with an adjective. So you'll be able to say things like, uh, that girl over there who is reading a book is my sister. <laughs> uh, thank you to all of the patrons who make this series and other series possible on this channel. Again, don't learn just from me. Check out all the other Japanese educators in the description. And also, if you're more at the intermediate level and felt like this was a little easy, I have a couple playlists floating around my head where you learn Japanese through anime songs or where you learn Japanese through Sailor Moon episodes that I break down one word at a time. Regardless, hope to see you next time. Matane!